Hello everybody. So we're going to be tying a red annelid tonight. And I've been tying a ton of these bugs for um, clients. And it's been a good fly for the San Juan River this winter. And it's also just in general a good red annelid pattern. It tends to imitate an aquatic earthworm really well. And when I talk about an annelid, I'm going to talk about the aquatic earthworms that are actually living in the river. So they look a lot like regular worms except that they're more flat and um, aside from that they look like the kind of worms that you used when you were a kid. The San Juan worm is probably the most popular fly meant to imitate the annelids or the aquatic earthworms in your rivers and lakes and this is another one. It's a red annelid. The other one that it always gets, the other fly that always gets mistaken is a red larva, like a red midge larva, which is going to be tied different than this. The red midge larva are a lot smaller and they're definitely hardly ribbed. They're more of just a, a red hook or an olive hook. They're um, usually a lot smaller, probably size 22 would be a big, big one. And for the body of this fly, we're going to be using D-rib. This is small in red. There's also blood red. I like to use, there's like a, a rusty brown color that works well. Uh, more of a brown color that would be uh, sort of imitative of a regular earthworm. You'll play around with colors, but most of the time a good red one, orange one, or a, a brownish orange annelid has worked best for me. And for the thread, we're gonna use Semperfly Nano Silk. It is the 30 denier or 18 knot thread. And the hook is a Daiichi 1260 in a size 18. So I'm just gonna start the Nano Silk near the eye. If there's one critique to this thread, and there aren't many of them because it's great thread, it's that it's really slick. So you want to take a good six wraps up towards the eye and then six wraps over itself so that it can really bind in and um, the thread won't slip off your hook shank. So I'm going to cover those pieces where I trim the tag ends. And everything that I do when I'm tying small flies is meant to not build up bulk. The, uh, the fly should have a relatively thin profile, shouldn't have a lot of thread wraps underneath. You should be counting thread wraps actually, so that's how, um, that's how OCD I get with it. Now i am tied the D-rib in with, in this case it, it was with the flat side on the top. It's not going to matter so much because you can manipulate it, but basically when you start wrapping the D-rib up you want the D-rib section, the half round section, to be near the top. You'll also notice that I kept about two thread wraps of um, space be behind the eye. It's super easy to crowd the eye when you're tying small flies, so leave yourself room behind the eye. Now I'm going to wrap back, and here's where I vary when it comes to other tires. I don't wrap in touching turns. I'm trying to space my turns of thread out as much as I can. I don't want to create a base of thread that's not as bright as the uh, larva lace or the D-rib that you're using. I want the hook, the shiny part of the hook, brass, whatever you're using, I want that to come through on the D-rib. And you can see that I've already created a sort of um, tapered, ribbed appearance to the fly. So I wrap up to the eye and now I'm going to take this D-rib. And I'm going to make these first couple of turns super tight. It is easy to, when you're wrapping this material, it's easy to get it twisted. So you want to keep wrapping it with two hands. And you want to keep the material flat. You don't want the material to be twisted when you're putting it on. You want to try to take the turns where they're touching. It's, it doesn't matter as much as you would think, as long as you can try to get these turns to be butting up against each other so that each segmentation of the worm kind of abuts the previous one. I'm going to take one more turn and I'm going to tie that D-rib off there. So again, you'll notice I still have about a thread wrap behind the hook eye so that I don't crowd the eye. 
on this fly. When I tie it off, I'm going to pull that super tight. Great thing about Nana Silk is you can pull as hard as you want. It's not going to break. And then I want to trim this super close to the hook. So what I'm going to do is take that D-rib and really stretch it out and then trim it. And what that does is it allows the uh, D-rib or midge lace, whatever you're using, to suck back up into the thread, the thread. And then the hook eye, I'm sorry, the eye of the fly is tiny. I want the eye of this fly to just be about as big as another wrap of uh, D-rib, of segmentation. I don't want the eye on this fly, the uh, head of this fly, to be any bigger than that. And it's a little hard to whip finish with the camera in the way, but I'm going to take a whip finish and I'm going to build this thread with my, I'm sorry, build the head with the thread. I don't want to create any more bulk than is already there. I want this head to be like another piece of segmentation and I don't want there to be a pronounced head or anything. Take a couple of quick finishes and then that is it for the fly. Uh, a lot of people are have encoding their flies with UV materials, you know, UV glues and that's great. For these ones where I just need a head to be coated, I like Sally Hansen's nail polish. This one is Diamond Strength. It's clear. This is cheap and we've been using it for years and years as tires before there were any fancy glues and when all the head cements that were available were so thick and terrible to work with. And what that's going to do is it's just going to allow the thread to become more of a segment. Like I said, I don't want the, the thread head to be huge. I just want the uh, head of this fly to look like another segment of D-rib. I don't want there to be a pronounced, you know, thorax or head to this fly. I like for this annelid pattern to just be a straight, untapered, worm-like fly. And if you can look closely, you'll see that what I did by not covering the hook shank with the thread wraps is I created a sort of a glistening effect because the metal of the hook is coming through on that annelid. So as opposed to up here where I have the thread wraps down, you know, it's just plain red. Down here, you can see where it's darker red, lighter red, darker red, lighter red, red. You can see how it kind of shimmers like that. And these, the, the real aquatic earthworms tend to look like this, depending on what they're eating. So their bodies are fairly translucent. They have sort of a red or purple brown color to them. And then they'll have, um, depending on what's inside their organs, they'll have, you know, dirt, whatever they're eating inside their body. So it creates sort of this inner worm and then an outer worm that's separated. So this is why I tie this annelid with the hook shank coming through so that you have that kind of inner worm of the stuff that it's been eating and then the outer worm that's more translucent red. And try that out. Um, it seems like a simple pattern, but there are definitely things you can do to tie this fly to where it's more effective. And let me know how it works. As always, the first person to comment will get a copy of this fly. I'll mail it to you. So comment and then try to reach me on Instagram or my email below. And make sure and like and subscribe to the video. Thanks, everybody.